Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to learn how to make a one part plaster mold for slip casting. Let's get started. So the first thing you guys want to know about starting your one part plaster mold is to know about something called undercuts. Now, what is an undercut? It's an indented or undulating area in your form that can cause your mold to stick or to lock. And I'll show you how it's done using paper below. Welcome to the 2D world. This is your standard cup. And I want you to imagine, let's say we were to cut that cup in half, starting from the top down to the bottom. So it's kind of, kind of looks something like this. Now, the way that we are going to make this one part mold is that we're going to flip our model, in this case, the cup upside down, right? And now we're going to pour our plaster on top. So it'll probably look something like this. Remember guys, this is a cross sectional view. Cross section. You. After this plaster has hardened, we are going to take the mold upside down, I mean right side up, and the cup comes easily freed. Now I'm going to show you an example of an undercut. Here's the same cup, right? Except we're actually going to pour the plaster as is. So the plaster goes on top, everything's fine, nice and dandy. After it hardens, we're going to turn it around, and you guys can probably see what's going to happen already is that the cup will get stuck and your cup is lost inside the plaster forever. I'm going to show you how this is a perfect one part mold sample. It's a peach, it also held lotion, and of course it doesn't look like anything else. Don't even think about that guys. So I'm just going to take the top and using your finger or in my case a tool with a little bit of glue on it so you guys can see properly. The way that you can understand where undercarts are, you want to look at from the top view down and then run your finger or tool onto the sides. And if your tool disappears, or in this case, if the glue disappears, there's an undercut. But in this case, we don't have that. Now here are some real life examples, 3D examples of some undercuts. Here is a two part apple made out of plastic. It had lotion in it, it smelled really good. An example of this undercut would be, you're pouring plaster from on top here. You're pouring, you're pouring, you're pouring. Oh. So over here is where your plaster will get stuck. Same thing. We're going to look it from the top down. We're going to pull it onto the sides and then it disappears because here's an undercut. Okay, so you figured out where your undercuts are if you have or haven't had any. Now, just one second, you need to contain the plaster that you're pouring on top and I'll show you how to do that. You can use flashing. You can also get this at Lowe's or Where's the other one? Home Depot, Home Depot. You can also use some coddles, or you can even just use a bucket. In my case, it's not being called lazy, it's being called, you know, dead. Smart with your time. It's not being lazy. This is how to make an easy plaster mold anyway. So, what you want to do is that this is going to be my model that I'm going to use. You want to have one inch wall around the furthest point. These are my furthest points from the center and we want one about one inch thickness. This bucket happens to be pretty much one inch around at the bottom so it's perfect. Another thing you guys need to know is that before you pour your plaster onto your model you need to make sure that it pops off. So in order to make that pop off I love to use Murphy's oil soap. Now, you don't have to use Murphy's oil soap. I just prefer it because I've been using it forever and it's been um, recommended to me by my teacher. You guys can also use dishwashing soap. I heard that Dawn is great. I like to apply the soap at least three times before I actually pour the plaster in. I like to give the bottom of this bucket a clay base just to keep the bottom clean. And also, this piece, if I were to just cast it like that, and then there's nothing on the bottom covering it, it will definitely be an undercut. I'm going to trace this piece very roughly. I don't want it to be the exact size because it's going to have a difficulty slumping to the bottom. So that's about there. I'm going to cut a little bit on the inside. Okay. Now what I'm going to do with this clay base, I'm going to push it in until it's completely flush with this. It might take several uh, depths of this rather. This just fits in. Woo! 
Okay. Now I'm just going to plug up these sides. Plug it in, plug it in. Actually, do they even sell those anymore? I'll take this straight edge and just carve it down the bottom because right now it's all curled and I would like my edges to be flat. So I already pre-soaked this uh, three times, but I'm going to do it one more time just for luck. So I'm pouring the plaster and make sure, making sure that the plaster doesn't just bloop it. This plaster consistency is almost like heavy cream, I would say. Ooh, yummy. Doing it super slowly, making sure no rush. Right, now after that's done, I just want to make sure that I just give it a little wiggle. Release any bubbles that I have gotten in there. Release that bubble, that bubble. Tap it a little bit. Okay, the plaster is ready to come out now. I'm just going to flip it over and tap gently. It might take several tapping motions. Aha! Ooh, it's gorgeous. So before I take this guy out, I really want to clean up these edges. I want to make a relatively flat surface so I can easily cut off the actual casting. All cleaned up and the big reveal. Just gotta be a little careful, a little nudging. Oh. Oh, how pretty is that? Oh my god, you guys. Okay, so after this, you want to set it aside. Um, to dry for 24 hours, so you want to put it, elevate it, so the underside can dry too as well. If you have a fan, have it blowing towards it all night if you'd like. But other than that, it should be ready in 24 hours. And that's how you make a one-part mold. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. So make sure you click on my face, subscribe, and check out all these other videos for more shenanigans like this. And tutorials, of course. Okay, see you next time. Bye! And that's how you make a one-part mold. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. So make sure you click on my face, subscribe, and check out all these other videos for more shenanigans like this. And tutorials, of course. Okay, see you next time. Bye!